Saturday, everybody, and welcome to Liz Live. Welcome to Liz Live. Stop talking. There we go. Welcome to Liz Live. Happy Saturday. I am Liz Statlander, marriage and family therapist and mental health counselor. Good morning, Jeremy. Here to talk to you today about the issue of separation. And separation, um, you know, can mean a lot of things. And I think when we're thinking about separation, um, we tend to think of it in the sense of a romantic relationship. You know, should we, should we separate? Should we separate when we're, you know, having marital problems? And, you know, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my feelings on that subject. But I also want to take it to, a, you know, a, a, a larger kind of a global um, scale and talk about why I think separation is such a bad thing and why I really feel like it's, it's hurting the world. And I was inspired by, um, you know, actually a podcast that I heard yesterday where people were talking about what's wrong with the world and how we have sort of manifested what's happening in the world right now. It's, it was so interesting. And so I, I'm going to apply it to romantic relationships. I'm going to take it to a bigger level. So, um, Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's so much. I'm so glad to be back. I was gone the last two Saturdays. I was traveling, and um, I don't know if anybody got to catch my show Wednesday night, but if you haven't, please go watch it because it's a wonderful, inspirational interview with a friend of mine who is a paraplegic, and um, she talks about her um, her life, her accident, how she became a paraplegic, and how she has basically kicked ass with life and she doesn't let it stop her or keep her down from doing things and all the wonderful projects that she's working on. So I highly, if you want to shed a few tears and be moved and it's and inspired, please, um, and, and please go watch, please go watch. And good morning, Catherine. So happy to see my friends here with me this morning. So, okay, let's talk about separation on two levels. We're talking about separation first on the level of romantic relationships. And I get asked this question all the time as a marriage and family therapist, you know, obviously I meet with, um, couples, you know, all the time, every day that are not in a good place. And many times I get the question, should I separate from my, um, oh, thank you, Catherine, for saying that. Should I separate from my husband, wife, partner, whatever, um, because we, you know, we're, we're not getting along. It's not working. We're constantly fighting and we can't seem to get common grounds. And so people very often come in and sit on this very couch right here and they ask me, should they separate? And nine times out of 10, I am against people separating. I don't believe in it. And, and, and I'm going to tell you why, because there, there are certain couples that I think, you know, it's a good idea, but for the most part, I don't really support that. I don't support it because I think in a lot of ways, um, you know, you're running away from the problem and that the best way to work through problems is to confront them and work through them. Now, um, Separation can sound very attractive when you're butting heads and you're miserable around somebody. And so separation seems like a natural sort of way to, um, you know, get re remove yourself from the toxicity. But ultimately, that's just running away. And that's not really going to solve anything because you are living with this person and you are together with this person. So if you're your coping mechanism becomes to separate or to walk away or leave the home or leave the shared space, then that's a really bad 
um, you know, coping skill to develop because where's that going in the future? It's not going anywhere. So what, every time you fight, you're going to walk away and run away and stay out of the house and separate. And I don't think it's a very good idea because the best way to work through problems is to face them. But there are certain couples that I do see that are so toxic, um, abusive and toxic to each other. And when I see that cycle going on, then I will say, I think you guys should separate. And if you're coming to me and you're looking for therapy and I'm telling you that you should separate, that's not a good sign because that's something that I do very rarely and I only do for couples that you know are really just toxic abusive um, and just where I, I kind of doubt hope in a way. You want to come up here? No. So um, when we think about, you know, separation, um, separation is what I believe is the, the sort of the theme of the entire world right now. And what, what I mean by that and how I came to that conclusion was two things. So recently in the past few weeks, I have opened up my practice in a new way that I'm really excited about that I never knew that I would. And I'm starting to see people from all over the world, globally opened up. So I'm seeing people, Cord, it's not your turn, it's my turn. Say hi to everybody and then that's it. Sit down. So, of course. So, <laughs> so. I started counseling people um, this week in countries like the Philippines, Singapore, Argentina, Portugal, and Australia. And man, did that open my eyes. And what it's opening my eyes to is that when we say that everybody in the world is sort of going through the same thing right now, we kind of say it, and yeah, we're all going through COVID and we're all going through these things together, but we really, really are. And what I found by talking to people on the other side of the globe was not only are we all going through the same things um, with COVID, but the fallout of COVID is also the same. And what I'm finding is that in all of these other countries, there's also a lot of political separation. Um, I mean, every single person that I talk to in every single one of these countries is telling me how, you know, the government's divided and the people are divided. And um, it is interesting. And it almost feels like what's going on in America, you could cut it out and just stamp it on every other country in the world. And it's happening everywhere everywhere and we see you know a little bit on the news here you know we do see a little bit of what's going on in Europe and you know that there's a divide um, there we know there's huge divides going on in the United States but they're absolutely happening everywhere in the world so I had to sit back and ask myself what is going on what is the biggest issue that we're all dealing with right now in the world, not just the United States, but the whole world that's, you know, synonymous that we all can, you know, we're all actually experiencing simultaneously. And I was listening to this really brilliant author yesterday on a podcast talk about it, and he really inspired the show today. But what he said was alienation, that we have all become so alienated from each other but yet we don't know how alienated we have become from each other. And so that, that disconnect or that alienation globally and in the United States and in your backyard, okay? Remember, this is going on every single place you turn. Because people are so unaware of it, we have actually manifested our own crises. And that's a really deep thought. And I'm going to talk more about that in a second. But so when I'm thinking, I'm like, well, that's interesting. Is he suggesting that, you know, somehow we have manifested COVID? We have manifested all of our own political issues, not just in the U.S., but everywhere. And if we have, you know, what is the message 
what are we supposed to be learning and how do we get out of this and how do we change it? So I started thinking really deeply about it and I realized that even on the level of families and couples, which I see, you know, day in and day out, I'm working with families and couples and individuals. And even when I'm talking to those clients in, you know, other parts of the world, it's the same, it's the same thing. The political issues, the social issues, everything is kind of the same everywhere. And if I could think of one good word to describe all of that happening, the word I came up with was separation. You know, this other gentleman said alienation, you know, and if I could remember his name, I honestly would give him credit. I just can't remember. Um, but I know he wrote like five New York Times bestsellers. I mean, he's, you know, a very accomplished guy, very bright. Um, but I would call it separation. And I thought, well, you know, I never really liked separation so much in my marital counseling work. And I don't like the concept of the way we're living in a separate mindset right now. And how do we combat that? How do we combat that separation that's happening in the, in the world? And what does it mean? What does it mean? So the way that I think we've become so separated, and this can be, again, we can look at this in married couples, friendships, families, global, okay? But I think what we're, what's happening is we are all defining ourselves by a particular group by the way that we think. Okay, so for example, the political, everyone knows the political divide that's going on in the United States. Well, guess what? It's going on everywhere because everywhere in the world is dealing with COVID and all of the issues that sort of come along with COVID. So there's, you know, vaccines or no vaccines. Should we have to be vaccinated? Should we not have to be vaccinated? Our liberties and freedoms versus public safety. You know, all of these issues are going on everywhere. Okay. And just so you know um, how good we have it here in the United States, most of the people I spoke to in other countries are just on their second shot of the vaccine. They're way behind because they don't have the, um, I'm going to call the spoils and the opportunities that we have here in the United States. So I've definitely felt even more thankful to be American in talking to people around the world. We forget. We don't have a clue how lucky we are. But... Um, this idea of separation, you know, I want to look at the ways that we separate. And we separate on the most, you know, individual level, we separate by saying, um, you know, I'm a Jew, I'm a Christian, I'm a Muslim. Well, if you're a Christian, then you're separate and different from somebody who's Muslim. Or if you are American, then you might be different than someone who is French. And all of these different identities that we have, they separate us. They put us into a category and they begin to separate slash alienate us from other people. And one of the reasons I was so excited to start counseling people globally is because I love learning about other cultures and I also love seeing how we're all the same but we found a very good way of separating ourselves politically culturally racially sexually with our sexual identities um, you know you name it we we find a way to separate ourselves I'm a sports fan I'm a this fan I like this pizza I like that pizza this is garbage this kind of music is horrible this kind is great the liberals are this and the conservatives are that so we have spent you know a lifetime but very intensely in the last year and a half finding ways to separate ourselves from other people and finding ways why our ways of thinking or our ways of doing things are so much better than everybody else's. And if you think about that, even on the micro level, when we're talking about couples therapy, you're talking about people who share a bed, who share a life, saying to each other, I'm against you. You're against me. 
this is my position, this is your position. And we stop, in a way, caring about other people's needs and we only focus on our needs and more people that agree with us. And when we're fighting with our spouses, think about it. We pick up the phone, we call our friends. Can you believe he did this? Can you believe she said that? And you're starting again a separation, right? You're starting a separation of you and your partner. You're separating your group of friends from your spouse's part partner's group of friends. And the separation continues on and on and on. I won't be around liberals. I won't be around those crazy conservatives. I'm not going to be friends with somebody who is, you know, a, a liberal or a conservative. And all of these things, I don't want to be around someone who hasn't had a vaccine. I don't want to be around someone who won't wear a mask. I mean, all of these, these things continue on and on and on. And we've created a huge problem by separating ourselves and identifying ourselves by all of these things that when it comes down to it, don't matter. They don't matter. And why don't they matter? And I'm not saying that social issues don't matter and I'm not saying you shouldn't care about, you know, what's happening in the world and have opinions. I'm not, I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying that we have to be open in, in a way in order to not be separate from everything and everyone all the time. We have to have a little bit of, um, you know, space in our ways of thinking to, to say to ourselves, well, you know, I really think this way. I really believe this. But this person thinks a completely different way. And there could be a potential or a possibility that maybe they have a point. Or maybe there's just, you know, a, a little baby possibility that, you know, they see things this way because, you know, they're doing it out of love or they're doing it out of a way of protecting themselves or their families or whatever, okay? And so even in our own bedrooms, when we have different ideas and different viewpoints, which is always the way it's going to be, by the way, in marriage and family, how can we find that place where we can be together to, to connect instead of doing this habitual separation of us from everybody else that isn't just like us, that doesn't live where we live, doesn't think like we think, doesn't want the same things that we want, doesn't understand, doesn't hear us, so therefore they're against me, right? How do we, because the separation that we've, we have created in, in this world is, um, being really intensified now by the, you know, I would say the dramas of the world. And, you know, I'm a victim of it as much as anyone. I mean, this whole show was based on politics there for a while. I mean, I got really, really sucked into the drama of politics and I still, you know, I still partake on my own time. Um, and I still have my, you know, very strong opinions. But I realized that the more that I'm doing that, the more I'm separating people and the more I'm separating myself. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to separate. I don't want to separate anymore. Okay. So what, in, in, to that point, if, you know, you're watching me, what, what is she talking about? You know, separation and who cares and blah, 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 but I'm right. She's wrong. Why does it matter? Why does it really matter? Well, it matters because it affects our mental health directly when we feel separate from other people. And when I work with people who are depressed, one of the first things they'll tell me is I feel so isolated. I feel isolated. And isolation, the feeling of isolation was going on long before COVID ever came along. But now that COVID is here and we have to deal with sort of a new norm, we feel isolated just because of a ma wearing a mask or because 
you know, we have such extreme views that are different than other people about how to live our lives or, you know, what's fair and what's not fair as far as, you know, getting vaccines or not, blah, all that crap, okay? They're all just human dramas because at the end of the day, all of that just keeps separating us. And when you're separate and you're isolated from other people, then you start feeling depressed, you feel disconnected, you feel like nobody cares, and it can really spiral you in a direction that's not healthy for your heart and your mind. And one of the things that I discovered by talking to so many people in other countries is that they feel exactly the same way. And what I was wondering when I started accepting clients you know, on a global basis, I wondered, you know, by taking all these different cultures, I don't, you know, I'm not super educated in all these different cultures. So am I going to really know how to professionally, you know, handle all the, because I have to start reading on this culture and that culture. And I was really worried about it. But that, then when I talked to them, I was like, oh my God, no, we are all the same. We have the same fears. We have the same desires. We have the same everything. We really do. And so I thought, it, what an important show topic to talk about how we're all separating ourselves in, in every way imaginable, every way imaginable. I mean, I could go on and on and on about the different ways we separate each other from cultural, religious ideals, political ideals, neighborhoods, um, you know, the way we look our race, our sexual preference, our choice in shoes and clothes, um, you know, our different traditions, um, you know, whether or not we believe in certain, you know, things, it could be any social issue. Um, you know, we separate ourselves, school districts, we separate ourselves in police departments, we separate, 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 everywhere, in every way. And it's only getting worse. And something like COVID, which is a global issue and has touched everybody in the world, I think should be a light bulb that should maybe be going off in our heads that's saying, my gosh, we're really not that separate at all. We're actually all really very much connected. And the one thing that connects all all of us, no matter how you shake it, is we're all part of the human race. We all are basically designed exactly the same. Exactly the same. We may express that very differently. That's our individuality and we have our personalities and we have things that, yes, make us unique and special. But when we separate ourselves, we really um, do ourselves a disservice and we forget that we're all a part of this human race and we all want the same things in life when it really boils down to it. And even when we're discussing cultures that are so, so different, underneath it all, we're all in some way connected. And when I think about like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm – for example, of a way that people can be connected, like, okay, I'm talking to somebody in the Philippines and I've been talking to her like every day because she's grieving her dad and she's having a really hard time. And we are making this wonderful connection and she starts watching this show and then she's connecting to all of you and you're going to be connecting to, to her and just through you know one conversation she's connected to all of us right now it's amazing she's in another time zone she's in another part of the globe but she wants the same things that all of you want that i want that all my clients want that everyone in america wants we want to be loved we want to know that we can be safe in the world. We want to know that 
you know, we can accomplish things in our lives and what we want to accomplish may be totally different. But at the end of the day, we all want to be loved and we all want safety and we all want fulfillment. And we may all walk a different path to get there, but we're all really connected by true human desire and the, the humanness, in a sense, of us all. And how sad that we've forgotten about that. And so, you know, getting back to the, the bedroom, getting back to the American couple, you know, definitely getting some space from a situation that seems overwhelming um, for a little while can be helpful if it's possible. But again, we, in our arguing with our spouses, so often what I see is that we think we're separate. We think we're totally separate from the person that we married, that we're living under the roof and that we are, we chose to live with. And we see ourselves as us against them. And I see this in couples all the time. And when you have that us against them mentality, that's what you're going to get. If you see your spouse as an enemy or you see that you have an us against them feeling in your relationship, you better check yourself big time. And I'm not saying that you should, you know, all couples belong together. They don't. Um, I don't think that everybody in the world is going to get along or has to get along. Um, you know, that's not my point. My point is that in, in here, in your worldview, in your lens, in the way you see things, remember, don't forget that all of humanity is connected in a very deep and very special way. And we all are part of this big, you know, sort of, I don't know how to call it, but like this, this state of consciousness. We're, we all share that. We're all in the moment and we're all in a way connected in some way. We share the same earth, <laughs> you know? We, we share the same, um, I think, desires and wants. And when we're constantly, you know, separating ourselves from other people because of the way they think or the way they believe, you're disconnecting and you're isolating and you're putting yourself into this distant bubble where only people of the same energy are going to be able to fit into. And then you're cutting yourself off from the rest of the world and maybe even the rest of your family. And that's pretty scary. It's pretty scary. So let me just check the screen and see what's going on. Um, good morning, everybody. Wow. Good morning. Good morning, Jeremy. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning, Chad. What's going on, Chad? If when you have, Chad says, um, when you have a substantial amount of time to focus anything too much, other aspects of your life will sacrifice. We only have so much time in a day to invest in this. I think you mean in these things that are important to them. When where they invest time and the things that come out of someone's mouth say a lot about a person. It's like kids. Once the, matru once the mature, the energy, the exhaust on things at a young age changes their life changes. It's an ever-changing part of life. We are in a different stage of our life. Yeah. Okay. Let's, and let's expand on that a little bit. So I think what Chad is saying is that, you know, what you put your attention on grows, right? So if, you put your attention on the separateness of yourself and others or in, in whichever way. You know, if it's we're Americans and they're the Chinese, right? Separate. And you think about how different and how separate we are, then that is your reality. That becomes your reality. And I think what Chad's saying is, you know, when you're a teenager, you might be focusing on one thing, but 
and everything seems so important, like the dance or, you know, what you're wearing to your prom or your school dance or what boys are talking to you or what girls, you know, and you think of, that is your world. And as you get older and you grow and you become more mature, you kind of can open your mind and focus on other things. Um, I think that's what you're saying. And I would, I would agree with that. And I don't want to sound, I don't want to be coming across like, I don't believe in boundaries and, you know, secure borders and rules and order and all of that, because I believe that that has to be in order to keep peace, in order to keep things organized. But what this guy was saying that I was listening to on this podcast is he was suggesting something pretty deep and he was suggesting that we as a world, not as America, not as a particular country or gender or race or anything, but we as a world have created and manifested the issues that we are facing right now, which is being lonely, being separate, you know, being, um, you know, kept far away from the people we love out of fear of, you know, COVID, giving up our freedoms because we might catch something or trying to take other people's freedoms away um, and not really thinking about what's happening and thereby we're creating the problem. And the problem that keeps coming up in every society is separation. And people are in pain from being separated. And I realize that when I talk to people from all over the world and everyone's saying, oh, the, you know, I think everyone in the world is depressed right now. This is coming out of the mouths of, you know, young professionals who are, you know, well-traveled, you know, maybe in their 30s. They've been all over the world. They, they know what's going on, and they are telling me they're depressed because they can't see certain people or they can't. So, so if that's the problem, if the problem is separation, if the problem is alienation, if the problem is disconnectedness, that we've forgotten how, you know, how together we all are underneath it all, then we have to ask ourselves, we have to kind of look in the mirror and see that issue, that problem as a mirror of us as a world, as a world society. And we have to ask ourselves, okay, how did we get here and how do we get out of this mess? Because if we don't and we keep going in separate directions and we keep becoming more and more separate from each other and more and more far away from each other, and more and more away from ourselves, think about what that future is going to look like. I mean, somebody said to me the other day, um, you know, in like in here in South Florida, there's all these um, gated communities. It's just sort of the way that, um, you know, Florida set up. It's very spread out and there's not a ton of urban areas. There's some, but it's, you know, the beach, kind of or where the urban areas are and then everything outside of that is is you know kind of spread out and in section of these gated communities with security and and it's just the way it is and he said to me you know isn't it amazing like now what's going to happen like are these you know house gates like these gates for different living communities are they going to become like police are they going to start checking you know vaccination cards and you know giving you COVID tests and and keeping people in and out of that living community I mean where where are we going here and the more that we go down that road and the more separate we become from each other the more mentally ill we become the more um, imprisoned we become and if it goes there in a sense we have nobody to blame but ourselves and I think this guy had a point that we have, you know, alienated ourselves from even seeing the issue, the actual issue. We keep focusing on COVID and what the liberals are doing and what the conservatives are doing and blah, 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 and all this stuff and, and what Donald Trump did or what he didn't do and 
on and on and on. And we were missing it. That's not the problem. That wasn't the issue. That's a, a place to put blame, and I'm guilty of that too. I mean, I blame President Biden for everything as I speak, <laughs> okay? 70% of America, so the polls say, are doing that, but I digress. But the more that we separate ourselves, the more that we put ourselves into mental illness, into depression, into loneliness, and we miss the whole point of humanity. We miss the whole point of being human. Right? And even when we put it into a smaller situation and we're looking at our, our little relationships that we have, um, it's similar. And it's hard because on one hand, you know, we're trying to survive. We're trying to, you know, we all have our lives to live. We all have our bills to pay and our, our families to worry about and, you know, our health and our individual stuff that we just have to keep up with, you know, and it doesn't leave a lot of room, as Chad was saying, a lot of time to, you know, do much more than that. But I think that the answer doesn't necessarily mean uh, an action, per se, that we have to take or, you know, a physical change that we have to, to, to you know, set aside time for. I think it's a mindset. I think it's just a shift of a mindset from us against them to, you know, we are the world. Like if you remember um, anyone who's like in their 40s or 50s, you know, would remember um, We Are the World, which is one of my favorite songs um, that was done by all of these musicians in the 80s to help um, Africa and world hunger, I think it was like, you know, world aid or I forget, something like that. We are the world. So um, Quincy Jones, the famous producer um, and songwriter, you know, he together with all these po popular musicians, including Michael Jackson, Diana Ross, Bruce Springsteen, uh, Steve Perry, uh, Willie Nelson, uh, Luther Vandross, um, Tina Turner, uh, Cindy Lauper, uh, my gosh, like everybody was in there from the 80s. They all got together and they wrote this most beautiful song called We Are the World. And you know, it was a huge hit and they raised all kinds of money for world hunger and it was really lovely. And that, that's, a, it's a beautiful, um, and again, I'm not saying everyone should go out and start jumping into to charities and doing things. All I'm saying is it's a, a, a mind shift from seeing ourselves as all separate because of all of these different titles or all of these different social groups to being able to cut through all of that and say, hey, you know what? We're actually kind of all the same. It's just that if we see outer differences or we see, I don't know, financial differences or educational differences, Right away, you know, we're separate. We're different. Different's okay. Separate's not. Because we really are a lot more connected to each other than we realize. And I think if we just make that mental shift, you know, that's all we need to do. Because once you make that shift in your mind, you're going to become more aware of yourself when you start to think, that you're enemies or you're different or you're separate from people. And I bet that, you know, I could take a conservative and a liberal and say to each one of them, okay, I'm going to put you in a room with somebody and you're not allowed to talk about politics. You can only talk about family. That's it. They could become great friends and they could find out that they might have similar values, right? But in society, they're enemies because they're missing what brings us all together. They're missing the humanity and the shared consciousness of the world. And they're choosing to isolate 
and to separate themselves from everybody else just by one category. That has become so overwhelming to many people that they won't even, you know, be in the room with somebody who, you know, thinks differently than them. What a shame. What a shame. Think of all the wonderful people you could be missing. And that goes on both sides. And if we look at it globally, you know, I mean, people are telling me that, you know, oh, society's divided in half, that, you know, this versus that. It just sounds like a carbon copy of what's going on in the United States. So that really got me. And I thought, wow, okay, so this is going on everywhere. So we need to really sit back and think about what this means. What does this mean? And what is the lesson for all of us? And I think that if you make that mental shift and you're approaching every single thing that you experience in your life on a daily basis with that non-separateness or that, hey, we're all connected kind of idea, I mean, you could start really changing your little space that you live in. And that could then change another space and another space and another space. And the ripple effect could be, you know, just incredible. Think about it, right? I mean, it could really be something. It could really be something. So try it, right? And the next time you hear, um, you know, like, ugh, you know, listen to those stupid liberals, you know, those – you know, remember that, you know, you're separating yourself. You're saying in a way that you're better than because of the political party that you believe in or the way that you think. And believe me, there's plenty of media and stuff out there to uh, encourage it. You know, the media loves separating people love turning people against each other, love splitting people apart. Don't fall for it. And shame on them. And don't fall for it. And if you agree with me, you can't like them. You know? And if you think about how immature it is, it's almost like when you are um, like in middle school. I don't know if anyone remembers being in middle school, but I do. The girls were so mean. And you had to like be in the group. And then one day the group wouldn't talk to you, so nobody would talk to you. And then they'd take you back in, and then it would be, you know, somebody else. That's like what we're doing, you know. And, and it's, um, it's childish, and it's very um, – it's, it's a very interesting theory that we have actually manifested – the world has actually manifested all of our own problems. And if we think about that on, you know, an, a personal level, it makes sense too. You know, if you feel so separate and so isolated and so different and so much better in a way, um, who's going to want to be around you? Probably nobody. So then you're fulfilling your own prophecy, you know, like you're not going to have any friends because no one's going to want to be around someone who thinks they're better than everybody or that they're right and everyone else is wrong. And I see it every day in my counseling sessions, in families, in, in um, romantic couples, and over things. And it's not just politics. It could be over – that seems to be the big one right now, but it could be over anything. And so we actually wind up manifesting – the, our, the problems that we, we fear by the way that we behave. And so COVID might be a big lesson in a way to say, hey, let's quit being so separate. You know, this is something that's touched everybody in the world. Everybody, every human being on the planet has had a similar experience that has connected us. So if that's not enough to wake you up and say, wow, we really are connected to everyone around the world. We really do have a shared experience. What are we, you know, what are we going to do about it? Well, again, my only asking is to make the way you think change. I'm not asking you to go out and change the world. I'm not asking you to change your beliefs even. You hold on to those beliefs. They're yours. You hold on tight to your belief systems. 
right? They make you feel safe. But there are other belief systems besides yours. And if you're scared by that, then I would say you don't really believe in your own system. So when, you're, when you truly believe in yourself and in your, your whatever you believe, you're not going to be threatened by other people's beliefs. You wouldn't care, right? Okay, they have their beliefs, I have mine. Let's go to dinner. Let's talk about family. Let's talk about art. Let's talk about music. Let's talk about dogs, right? Why does it always have to be talking about things that will separate us? So we really need to think about that, why we do that, why we organize ourselves away from each other when we are all having a shared experience as human beings and now we've all had a shared experience as, I guess, you know, COVID, um, I don't want to say victims, but having to deal with COVID and how it's changed all of our lives and all of our worlds in very much the same way. We're all dealing with feelings of fear and separation and isolation and not trusting our government and not trusting um, you know, the different vaccines and medications and some people do and some people don't and the people who don't trust the vaccine are crazy and irresponsible and the people who do are sheep. You know, I hear all these constant ways that we separate ourselves. But if you think about it, the person who doesn't want to get a vaccine for their reasons, which I fully respect, versus the person who does want to get the vaccine, they both want to be safe and healthy. They just have a different way of doing it. That's where we're connected. The liberal views and conservative views, the people who are very strong in those belief systems, all really care about the government and how it's run. That's a way to be connected. Why are we seeing ourselves as so different? And how is it helpful to see yourself as different? I don't believe it, that it is. I don't believe that it is. So, and good morning, Thomas. It's nice to see you and many blessings um, to you as well. And thank you for your always kind and sweet words. So I want everyone to kind of walk away from today's show. Um, sort of think of, oh, oh, I got sucked into Liz Live today because I thought she was going to be talking about separation and couples, but I really wasn't. Um, I just think that that's how we think about separation. Oh, you're getting separated? You know, that means a couple's not quite on the divorce, but, you know, they're going to separate for a little while. But that wasn't really what I was talking about. I'm really talking about how we make ourselves consciously and knowingly separate from other human beings when really we're all connected and especially in this moment where we feel the most divided, we are the most similar. And I learned that this week in a strong way. And when we shift our awareness from one of separateness to one of, hey, we're all human, we're all looking for the same things, we're all in this together, how can we help one another? That is what changes the world. You know, you don't need to go out and, and protest, I don't think. It's great if you do, but you don't have to. You don't have to have a talk show. You don't have to do, give to charities or anything like that. Those are choices. Those are choices. But I do encourage people to shift your mindset from separateness to togetherness and just try it for a day or two and see how much it relaxes you and how your defenses come down and how you won't really feel a need to argue or defend anything because you realize, oh, I'm, I'm not really separate. By, by being kind and understanding to one person could spill over and that person being kind and understanding to another, just in the same way that being, you know, mean or nasty can, right? If, if you are mean, well, you know, if you're mean to somebody, well, you know, you're an idiot because you believe in pro-choice or pro-life, you know, you're an idiot for that. Well, if you think that and you treat someone that way, then they're going to turn around and say, well, the, the people who think differently than I do on abortion, you know, then, the, you know, they're, they're horrible. 
and it becomes a spiral downhill versus, you know, um, I feel this way, a particular way about abortion. Um, you know, this person feels this way. You know, I'm not smart enough to know right or wrong because we're really not, okay? Nobody really knows. It's, it's an opinion. It's a choice. It's, an, it's, a, it's a belief system, okay? But the more that you believe that you're right and everybody else is wrong, the lonelier and lonelier you're going to feel and the lonelier and lonelier you're going to be. So my message today is remember that we are all human and we all share humanity and the greater consciousness of this world, whatever the heck that means, I don't know, but it's the, the consciousness, the reality that we, that we see, though we see it different, we're all sharing the same consciousness and the same earth and we all have similarities as humans, so many more than you realize. And if we shift our thinking to togetherness instead of separateness, I think really truly one by one we can change. We can change the world and we can change the feelings of, you know, sadness and loneliness and being unloved. Um, but all it takes is a little bit of shift in your mind. That's all it takes. So I will leave us all on that. And um, if you haven't watched my interview of Sabrina Cohen from Wednesday night on Facebook, you need to watch it. It will really inspire you. This is, again, a friend of mine who um, became a quadriplegic at 14. She's now 43. And she talks about how she dealt with the tragic accident that she experienced and how she was able to um, fight through, you know, losing the use, the general use of her body and be such a success and such a light and such a wonderful spirit and wonderful human being um, despite everything and how she's still fighting on and changing the world for all people with disabilities, which means she's changing the world for all of us. So it definitely, definitely, definitely check out that interview. If you haven't, it's on Actuation Counseling's um, page. It's on my YouTube channel. So please like and share this show. I think it's a good message. Um, you can, um, again, always catch me at TheElizabeth126 on YouTube.com and Liz Live Wednesdays at 8 p.m. and Saturday mornings at 11 for a great conversation about the world and your mental health and whatever we feel like talking about. Whatever's important to you guys um, is what I talk about. And um, be kind to one another. And Catherine's parting words are, my favorite mindset is, uh, my favorite mindset is everything. It sure is. And that's why I believe so strongly in keeping that mindset healthy. You know, so important. That's why I'm a therapist, basically. But anyway, have a great weekend, everybody. And um, please like and share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I will see you guys Wednesday evening at 8 for another exciting Liz Live that we can all learn and grow from. Have a great weekend.